world. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is AJ Candelario from the Washington <laughs> Nationals. He plays there with the organization. He was um, he jumped around from Juco to Juco. We're gonna get into his story. It's gonna be really fun. Um, AJ, welcome, brother. Appreciate having you, Delon. Yeah, man. It caught a couple of your bullpens when I was in college. It's it's like it's just really cool to see you like just get to where you want to be. Not really yet because we all know the end goal. Yeah. But you got that pro contract. I want to really go through your career really quick of just, yeah, I know you started out in Miami Dade, yep. which is a pretty good JUCO, right? Yeah, great time down there, man. So, great like, just, program. Yeah, just walk, walk me through that. Like, what, what was it out there? Uh, so, you know, man, it was the first time being in Miami, and, you know, I've never been to Miami as a kid, so when you think, you hear Miami, you're thinking this big, big city, yeah. you're thinking parties, and you're thinking the whole boats and the whole nine, but uh, it was great, man, being in a city like Miami and being a young kid, getting away, getting to explore like that. Uh, school was great, man. You know, the coaches down there really knew what they were doing. They were real supportive coaches down there. Um, everybody worked hard for the most part. You know, you get kids that come from all over the place, so you start seeing a lot of cultures down there. But uh, it was Juco, man. It was a good program, so it was a grind. But Juco we, we Bandit. had a lot of fun with it, man. It, yeah. was, it was a great time down there. Going from, you know, New Jersey lifestyle to, to Miami, was it was it hard to you said that the, that the, the Miami crowd <laughs> was, was electric. So was it hard to kind of stay on task? Like, uh, you know, I was I was a young kid. I was 18, 19 down there. So uh, there's not much you can really do at that age. You got to be 21 again to get into all these big time spots and have a lot of fun. But yeah. uh, no, it wasn't too hard to stay focused down there. Uh, it was definitely great, and I definitely had my fun with my friends. We got outside, we experienced some things, and we had fun in that aspect. But you know, we were there for baseball. We did a lot of traveling. Baseball kept you busy, man. It was school and baseball for the most part. You you had maybe one day of the week if you were lucky to to go out and explore a little bit, but. It was great, man. Just focused on the game a lot. I had a lot of fun down there. Yeah, but was how was school for you? Was it easy to come? Hard? Did it come easy to you? Was it hard? <laughs> I, I was ne I was never the big uh, the big school kid, man. You know, and baseball. And got I, you I too. preach to all the kids I train now, like stay on top of your grades, stay on top of your grades, stay on top of your grades. Like I know the end goal is you want to go play in the big leagues, and the kids say all the time, I don't need a degree for the big leagues, but you don't know what what your process is going to be before that, and what the journey is going to be after that. So, uh, man, I really preach on school to younger kids, but I, I, I unfortunately wasn't on top of school uh, as much as I wanted to be. Yeah. You know, I showed up, I was there, but never really fully applied myself, but, um, you know, the school wasn't that hard. We were down there, we focused on baseball a lot, but it was just early morning classes and, yeah. you know, being away from New Jersey and Miami, you know, who wants to really get up early and, and no, go no. to school, but the yeah, school aspect was good. It, it, the biggest thing, too, is like applying yourself in school and then applying yourself in, in the sport and craft that you're in. It's just discipline. So, yep. like, what you're going to do, what how you do one thing is, like, how you do everything. Yeah. You know, so I, I, I hear you on that. It's Yeah, it, definitely translate, you know, who, who you are off the field and what you're doing off the field. It, it all carries on to yeah. what you do on the field night, perform on the field. You know, like, there was, man, we, we, I'd go to class and have a test I'd never prepared for. And, yeah. You know, I completely bombed that test. Yeah. And you're showing up to the game that day, like... Man, I got I got something I got something <laughs> bad feeling inside of me right now. You know, like I'm not feeling the lucky. I'm sick today. right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick. Were you, in the were you in the bullpen too that the, in the Miami Dade or? Uh, a little bit of both. You know, we uh, I was only in Miami Dade. I only played one season there because I, I had the Tommy John surgery. But within that season, you know, I I started a couple games here and there. You know, came out the bullpen, closed a couple games. So in college, they're still just trying to find out what you really are. You're still trying to find out what you really are. So you know, they're like, hey, you aren't feel good. You can give. Five minutes today, yeah, I can get five. <laughs> hey, you think you can give two today? Yeah, I can give two. You know, like, you were just out there balling, having fun, man. Yeah, like, but that day when you bombed that test, you're like, nah. Oh, <laughs> you bombed I'm that not, test. I'm not in. Yeah, because you got a little neck pain going <laughs> on. I'm not feeling the best. Stomach, stomach upset, <laughs> you know? Just because it lingers on, man. Like, like you you can't go show up to school and have a and have a bad test or, you know, get into an argument with somebody that day and think you're going to go to the field and forget about it, man. Like, it, it all carries on, yeah. so... You gotta, you, gotta shut, you gotta shut it off. You gotta, you gotta turn it off. So yeah, now, now I got into the habit of, you know, if we got a game, it's, it's a little different in pro ball. You're, you're at the field four or five hours earlier yeah. and you're around there and stuff. But I mean, even in my mornings before a game, like, man, I'm, I, I'm, I stay alone. I, I don't wanna really speak to nobody. I don't wanna do much yet. Just because, like, you can't really control what things are gonna happen. And I don't wanna get my mind off path before I get to that locker room because I do know I got about four or five hours where. There's a lot of sitting around going on. Like, don't get me wrong, you're going out there, you're getting your stretching done, and you're getting all your pregame stuff, your, your BP, your shagging, but you still have enough downtime to where you want to be able to stay locked in and, 
you know, even in the locker room, you're around your you're around your boys, you're around your teammates. You know, there's yeah. a lot of ping pong going. There's all all types of fun going on before the games. Like, but everybody locks in a different way. So I really tried to, you know, st- stay away from like guys if I could just for a certain amount of time. Not not towards oh I don't like my my teammates. Of course, but of course. I got to stay locked in. I got to stay on my path because any little thing really that happens in my day before that game, I know it's gonna linger on. So we try to avoid all that. Yeah, I mean, so going through backtracking a little bit from you know Miami Dade and again Tommy John mm-hmm. like how is that mentally how is that physically like man I, I say to people all the time and every time they ask me like, what do you what do you think about Tommy John how was it? my first thing is it was literally it was the biggest blessing I ever had in baseball really? man like it was it was really the biggest blessing. Obviously, not in a moment. You're like, yeah, oh, this course. is a blessing. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I can't feel I just, my arm. No UCL. I'm, I'm happy. You're not, you're not happy about it. But yeah, of course. Again, you're a young kid. Like I, I was 19. I wasn't even 20 years old. Yeah, you don't really understand anything. But what was the moment? What was the game? What ha- what happened? So, the day that I think really gave me a different outlook on the Tommy John was um. I was doing my therapy down there in, in Florida, and, you know, they always say st- your, your therapy is so important. Like, how you do your physical therapy, how you do your rehab, like, that is the most important thing. Like, you have a new ligament in your arm that's never been used. Yeah. You got to train it from brand new, man. Like, how you start it's like you're, you're raising that ligament into getting back to what you wanted to do. Yeah. But the day that really things really took a turn for me, because th- that, that process isn't fun, you know? Like, you go to school, you're going to rehab, you want to be out in the field with your boys and practicing. But um, I got a little deeper into my rehab. I was probably about three, four months in, this is when I just started moving the arm a little bit, maybe, yeah, maybe a little longer, four, four or five months, started moving the arm, and uh, showed up to, they said, hey, we're going to meet at Miami Day today, we're going to throw out there, we used to throw at the physical therapy spot a little bit, so I'm like, all right, cool, you know, so they're like, hey, be over here, we're going to have a couple guys out there doing their, their rehab and stuff too, all right, no problem, so I pull into the school, and uh, I see this blue Ferrari, just drop top Ferrari, just parked out, like, not even in a parking spot, man, like, just out on the grass, like where it's not supposed Miami to be. Miami style. Just Miami, you know, like just no rules. And I'm like, I'm like, man, like, who's, whose car is this parked at this junior college down here in Miami? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Why is this kid going to school? So I walk out onto the field, man. It's Bruce Hernandez is out there. So that, that, you know, that's my first time seeing a big leaguer. And I'm, yeah. I'm a young kid and I, I got this elbow injury going on. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, man. I'm like, this is Felix Hernandez, man. Like, you big dude in person, you know? Like, you don't really notice how big and... And how mature they are until you see him in person. Like, damn, you know, this guy's on the same playing field. Like, it's, it's like I got my weight up a little bit. But, uh, you know, going out there and being around him and there was a couple other big leaguers that were down there. Being around them at such a young age is such a weird point in my life and confusing point in my life. And uh, they, they just helped redirect me. Like, they were they were going through some injuries as well, the couple of big leaguers that were rehabbing. So just seeing how they were dealing with it and, you know, like, they weren't happy about it, but they, they knew they were, there was no doubt in their mind they were coming back, and there was no doubt in their mind they were going to have a good season, and there was just no doubt that their process was going to continue. You know, like it was yeah. just a little pause in their process, and just seeing how they reacted towards that and how they dealt with it, uh, that that's what really kept me really locked in on the on the rehab. So that, that that day, being around those guys, like, I'd say instantly the next day, like, I just had a whole different outlook on my process, yeah. and, you know, I really got the term really locked in a little different. They forgot about, oh, I got to do this, and I'm, I can't play right now, and I want to do this. I'm going to be bored out here. You know, getting away from that stuff and just, okay, this is going to go a lot faster than I think it is. Like, it seems like a lot of time. It's not going to be a lot of time. And uh, just staying with the process. But So going from that transition, you were Juco, Tommy John. Yep. Right? And then I know bits and pieces about it. You were yep. in the indie ball world for a little bit. Yeah, you did, indie you ball. Did, I had you a... decided to start your pro career a lot earlier, right, 22, 23? Yeah, man, I... So the, the Tommy John, it, it put me in a real weird spot, too, and this is why I always preach to kids, like, stay on top of your grades because it always comes back and bites you in the ass, man. Like, the stuff that people preach to you at a young age, like, you got to stay in front of the school is important, school's this, and we're young, we're ball players. You're like, man, yeah. we want to go to the big leagues, and, man, I'm going to show up, but I'm just going to get by. So after after that, um, I wound up, um, I actually didn't get invited back by the school. The school, uh, the school told me I wasn't going to come back that year, uh, just wasn't what they were looking for, and a couple of... Uh, little disagreements there but from there I couldn't um I had a couple of schools reach out to me a couple of division ones and junior college division twos all types of programs and I couldn't get into them because my my transcripts are just such a mess like I just transcripts are a mess so you know reaching out to these schools and they're reaching out to me and they were just it was just too hard for a process of them so that's when I got in a real weird spot in my career and uh I was like man like I'm now I'm 20 I was 21 22 years old and you haven't played since what 18 yeah, nineteen. I was uh, I was about yeah, I was about twenty years old, and um, that's crazy. 
did. I was working. Uh, I was working a life insurance job. I was about a year and a half in on this insurance job. I just totally got away from the game and was like, you know, what am I going to be as a person? How am I going to provide for myself? And and you know, all these things that your that your mind's just taking off at a young age. Like you're thinking about things way past you. Like where? How am I going to survive? And what am I going to do? And you know, everybody wants to make a lot of money as a kid. So how am I going to make all this money? So I got away from the. I actually got away from the game. I just didn't like how my elbow was feeling. Um, took me about two and a half, almost three years to, to really get back into it. I shut it down, just focused on the job. One day I was sitting there and I'm like, man, what am I doing? Like, I still, I still like to play baseball. I'm still young and, you know, it was, it was a good business, but everybody around me was just so much older, you know, like, and no offense to them. I was just a young kid who still had like the athletic ability. And I'm like, I don't want, this isn't what I should be doing. Let me, let me give it a try. You know, get back in and see how my elbow's feeling. And, uh, you know, started just tossing the rock again. And then something just clicked in and I was like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm supposed to be. Like, yeah. you know, I took a couple di- couple little obstacles and misdirections, but, you know, it all happened for a reason, and it all just kind of just clicked, bro. And from that day in, uh, I just locked it in a lot different, and I know there was, like, there was really no backup plan for me. You know, I was like, I'm school's out of the picture for me right now because I made such a mess upon myself. So, you know, there was really no backup plan, and feeling like my back was against the wall and there was nothing else to, to go forward besides baseball, I mean, you just get hungry and you do it, man, and you, you don't pay attention to the clock when you're working. You're just, you're just working. You're just working, and hours are going by, days are going by, and yeah. you stick to that process, man, that's when things happen. So what was the first uh, pro contract you got? Uh, the first pro contract I got was uh, COVID summer. Um, I just got started getting back into like a year, before, a little less than a year before that, uh, just posting some videos here and there, you know, just to see what I can get, if there was any opportunities out there. And I got a phone call from uh, the Sussex County Miners, actually, went and played near COVID League. Did so, COVID help or help you or no? You think? Oh uh, yeah, I think COVID one hundred percent helped me because, yeah. truthfully, I, I was, I was barely even ready for that COVID league, you know. Yeah. And there was a lot of guys that weren't playing in that COVID league just because they didn't know where baseball was going in that direction. So uh, the competition, don't get me wrong, the competition was good in the COVID league, yeah. but it wasn't as good as what the regular season was. So, if I do, I think if would I have played that year without if it was just a regular season, no COVID league, no, I think I, I had, I think I had no chance. I just was, wow. I just wasn't ready yet and. I haven't seen hitters past 18, 19 years old since college, you know, I'm playing with older guys now. Life so. insurance. Yeah, like, yeah there, was, up, there, there, there was no hitters in there, man. I'll tell you that. There was no bullpens getting thrown in, in the life insurance office. <laughs> nah, <laughs> what was that? Yeah. Uh, just say, oh, <laughs> baseball on the wall. Yeah. Uh, AJ's trying to get back into it. He's on lunch break right now. <laughs> no lunch break, throwing plyos against the building. Is that allowed? Oh, my God. Who knows, man? This is all type. You'd be surprised what goes on was, in that kind of world. <laughs> so you went for the Sussex County Miners, mm-hmm. County Miners, and then where'd you go after that? Uh, from there, um, didn't get a, a contract by any team the next following year going into 2021. How did that hit? Were you surprised um, or were you pissed? Or? Man, I, I, I really worked. So I didn't I didn't pitch good in that COVID league, you know, like it was again, it was just a, I had a lot going on mentally still about like am I prepared for this? And the biggest thing is if you feel you're not prepared and you feel you're not ready and you feel you don't belong, you are not going to perform. I don't care who you are, man. Like if you're if you're not mentally there and mentally really confident in what you're about to do that day, like it's not going to be there. It's going to snowball and it's going to be a fucking mess, man. I tell yeah. people that all the time. Like your mindset's so important. And my mindset just wasn't there because I knew I just wasn't ready, you know? And it was nothing against my work ethic. I was working my ass off, but I just, I just, I just got the, back into the, baseball. The time didn't build up. Yeah, yeah it just yeah. wasn't there. So, um, I, I got, I got real pissed off about that, man. And uh, that off season, um, really, really worked hard. I got a phone call from the, from the Boulders, and uh, no good people over there. Shout and, out, and, Zach, right? Yeah, yeah. Zach. <laughs> shout out. <laughs> that was, a, that was a funny team, man. I thought it was, a, it was a real funny crowd, man. Some great kids on that. Some great characters. But uh, got invited to their spring training. You know, they're like, hey, we'll give you a spring training invite. Went over to spring training. I thought I threw the ball really, really well. Uh, didn't get a contract out of spring training. So now now I'm just getting, like, you know, real real fired up about stuff. You know, like, not, not oh, I'm going to quit. This isn't meant for me. But more like, <laughs> shit, man, if nobody's going to let me in, I'm going to have to kick <laughs> the fucking door down. Let's like, go. I, I, I got to get it, you know. Yeah. So um, didn't, get, didn't, get signed out, didn't get signed out of spring training. A couple of weeks went by. That team actually wound up calling me back to go, uh, to go play for them. Um, I was with them. Didn't pitch the best with them. Barely, barely got uh, innings with them. Then went on to uh, Tri City Valley Cats, another team in the frontier. I got released from the got released from the Boulders. Went on to the Tri City Valley Cats. Uh, didn't really pitch that well over there either. Didn't um, pitch much over there either. And um, I didn't get invited back to that. So I didn't get in back. 
I had this. I got released three times in one season from indie ball, and I didn't get invited back at the end of the season. So the end of that season, that's when uh, that's when I'd say I really took a, a turn as a person and a player. Like that that was it for me. I was fed up, and I was like, I don't care what I got to do. It's getting done. Like I got, I felt like I had points to prove to myself and points to prove to other people, and it was just tunnel vision the whole way through. And that's when I really worked my ass off in the off season. And I told myself I was like, I'm either gonna go play uh, minor league baseball, major league baseball, or you know, I'm gonna try to go play in a big league overseas or something. Like, I, yeah. I need, I know I can go do it big, and people don't believe it, and, and I don't blame them for not believing it. You know, who's this guy out of baseball for three years? And, yeah. But I, I knew what I could do, and I knew what level I could perform at. So I just set my mind to I'm not playing independent ball. No offense to independent ball, it's just not where I wanted to be, and it's yeah. not, it's not, it wasn't my plan, it wasn't my uh, my path. So I said, I don't, I'm, I don't care if what independent ball team. I'm not going to independent ball. I don't care what it takes. I'm gonna go play minor league baseball. I'm gonna go play overseas. But my mind was so set minor league baseball, like. And I, I just knew it was, I knew I can do it. And, and it's, it's hard to say that people are like, oh, yeah, you knew you could do this. I always knew what I can do. Like, I always, I always knew my work ethic and I always knew my hunger and my character out there in the field and, and off the field and in the weight room. And I just knew it's, I know what I bring to the table and I know my, I'm going to compete. And I'm going to bring it all there. So I set my mind to just minor league baseball, minor league baseball, minor league baseball. And I actually made a LinkedIn account and, just made it all baseball stuff, and I was like, man, I was like, how am I gonna get in contact with these pro guys? Like, how are these pro guys gonna see me? You know, like I don't know, I don't have enough resources to say, hey, call this pro guy and have this pro guy come see me. So I got on LinkedIn and I sent, uh, I mean, dude, just just annoying these guys. I'll tell you, man, like some yeah. of, some of these teams, man, they they were just getting annoyed. Oh, at this me. guy again. Oh, this guy again, <laughs> just sending videos, just you know, it was just videos and who I am and what I do and just video after video after video after video after video. And uh, you know, I got a little bit of feedback on that, and then I had a had a guy reach out to me and said that there was a pro showcase going on out in, uh, out in Dallas. He, said, hey, son, uh, he connected me in to this guy out in Dallas. The guy's name is uh, D'Angelo Scott. Uh, we linked in on, on LinkedIn and we started talking. He's a real good dude and, you know, he wanted to help me out. So he kind of pointed me in the right direction to other resources he had and other guys that they had stuff going on. So uh, he actually plugged me into this guy uh, called Henry. Henry put together, like, these little free agent workouts, like, uh, independent ball teams, minor league teams, and yeah. overseas teams. So, uh, yeah, I went out in Dallas with uh, with the Rangers and Oakland. And go out in Dallas, man, and I'm like, this is going to be cool. It's going to be nice and warm out. This is like January. I'm like, it's yeah. going to be nice and warm out. Dude, I get off the plane. It's snowing in Dallas. <laughs> it's like 30 degrees. It's snowing. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. That might like, be the one time where, like, it... Yeah, it's the only time it <laughs> snowed. My, my, my cousin lived out there, luckily, so he was. I was with him. He showed me around town and stuff, but... He was like, man, it doesn't even snow like this. I'm like, that's <laughs> fucking <laughs> bad luck. because AJ's in yeah, town. because AJ's here. It's Let's go. Snow. Yeah. Got the Lario. <laughs> the snow's coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, storms are brewing. That splitter, whatever the hell you throw. You throw. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, went so, out there, threw for, those, uh, threw for those teams. Threw the ball well, man. Like, this, this, at this point, I was just completely locked in and just, again, tunnel vision and didn't wasn't paying attention to what was around me. It was just me and what I wanted to get done and, that's when um, I was out there for Rangers, like, 95, 96 out there, and I really started seeing my velo skyrocket. You know, I had good feel for my pitcher, started throwing strikes again. And uh, they just weren't, you know, I just, I just wasn't there what they wanted, you know. Like, that's just how, that's just how the game goes, how the business goes. Like, they, they got something they're looking for. It's either you got what they want or you don't have you want what you want. It doesn't make you a good ball player yeah, yeah. or a bad ball player. And I think that's where a lot of players go wrong, man. Like, they'll have a couple teams like, hey, we're not interested. And then they're just like, oh, I'm – Oh, I'm done. You know they don't want me to go play minor league baseball, and it's it's not that man. Like teams have what they're looking for, and they have what they want. Like they know what they're looking for, whether it's a number on the track man or the rap soda, or it's a, something about your profile, your build. Like they know what they're looking for, and you just might not have it towards that fit. But that doesn't mean nobody else is gonna not like it, you know. Yeah. So I was like, all right, like you know, they told me I threw the ball well. Like they were they were happy, they were impressed. I'm like, well, that's a good sign, you know. They said I threw the ball well through strikes. So then um. Was a little upset about that. Like, man, you know, that was that was the best I've thrown the ball in my life. That didn't work out. So came back home, right back to work, you know, like even even harder. And then uh the guy Henry had uh another showcase out in, in Arizona in the Mesa area. And he was like, Hey, look, there's gonna be uh two guys from the Marlins here and there will be uh, a team from uh Mexico, from the Diablos and I'm like, Man, look, you know, I'll I'll go either way, you know, I'm yeah. I'm willing to go to Mexico and go play in the in the big leagues over there, you know. they got yeah. they got some ball players over there and that could be a path for me. I was like, Man, I'm willing to do that and you know, of course my, my mindset on minor league baseball, so I'm like two guys from the Marlins, you know, like that that's gotta be something good if there's two guys there. So uh go out there and you know, I I'm real grateful for the guy Henry Manley. He really like he really wanted to see me do something good and he knew where my mind was and my determination and he uh 
said, hey, dude, look, come out here, man, throw the ball hard, be you, and that somebody, somebody's going to grab you up. Just come be you. And, dude, I mean, I was out there, and I, I don't think I've ever knew how deep in, in the zone I can get locked in until that day, man. Wow. Like, when I tell you, like, that day it all just hit me. It was, like, 8 in the morning. Actually, no, it was early. I think we got there, like, 7.15. We didn't throw until, like, 9. Wow. So, I mean, that's once I got the, it, it all hit me that day, like, everything, man. Like, all the hard work I put in and, and just the things I had to get through and everything I accomplished and just all, everything hit me. It was, it was a lot going on. I yeah. actually uh, I actually stepped off in the bathroom, like, 10 minutes before I pitched. Like, they were like, hey, you're going in next. And I was mid-catch playing. It all hit me. And I was like, oh, <laughs> shit, I got I to get out. I got to get out by myself yeah. real quick, man. Yeah. Like, I got a lot of emotions. And went out in the bathroom. It all just, it all just <laughs> fucking hit me, you know, like, really just locked it in myself. And, dude, went out there. I mean, it was. Yeah, you know, like 96, 97, best, best I've thrown a ball. Uh, both teams are really interested. They said they're just going to, hey, we're going to send some video back to our people. You know, we like you. Um, the team from Mexico is really interested. Really good guy over there, too. Real respectful, real respectful guy. And um, they're like, hey, you know, we're just going to reach out to our people. Like, just sit and see what happens. But the Marlins, just the way they were talking, like, you're you're going to get a phone call from from whoever their boss was or whoever they had to report Miami, to. Miami, like, here I come back. Yeah, I'm like, man, this is, you know, this is like, this, <laughs> full is the circle. Clo- this is the closest I feel, like, yeah. full circle, man. I'm like, this is the closest I feel about, like, something actually happened with one of these teams. Yeah. And uh, I got home, I think it was about two days later. Uh, I got a phone call. It was, it was early in the morning, man. It was like 7 a.m. I was, I was asleep. And it's a New Jersey number. And I answered the phone, and uh, it's somebody from the Marlins who was from New Jersey, so it was actually pretty cool. I answered the phone, man. I was, I was like, fucking <laughs> asshole. I'm like, uh. I'm like, hello? I'm thinking it's a fucking scam. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm right, I'm right. And then they said who they were. And I'm like, oh, shit. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I jumped, I jumped out of bed, man. Threw some water on my face as, as I'm on the phone. So talking and... Uh, I'm in the middle of working out. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the middle of doing push-up. Like brushing my teeth. And, uh, yeah, that was Miami Marlins, man. They uh, offered me a contract. It sounded good, man. And, you know, it was quick conversation. Like, it was just... Hey, this is the Marlins. You know, they you want to do this, want to offer you this. How's it sound? And do you want any time to think about it? No, man, I was I was all in. You know, like yeah. I wasn't looking for. Uh, you know, everybody wants to get paid. Everybody wants money to survive. Like you, you want to take care of yourself and have money in your pocket, of course. But man, I was just so in. I was like, dude, I know, like that. I know I'm not. That's not where the money's coming from. Me, like, I, I just wasn't worried about money in there. So it was just, it was just such a quick negotiation, and, and they they gave me a good number, man. You know, they, they were good yeah. people. They gave me a pretty good deal. Just and need the opportunity. I'm just mad. I just got get. I just got get in the door. Like you know, yeah. my, my mindset right now isn't money. I know the money's going to come in the long run if I really do this the right way and, and make yeah. it. Everybody wants to make it. So you know, career career started right there at the Marlins, man. Which was which yeah. was which was crazy. I had uh, my college coach. He was like, "Hey, man, there's some some guys calling. They're asking about who you are as a person, and and if you got any you know any trouble or anything down here in Miami, you know, I think something's about to happen." And I'm like, "Oh, oh <laughs> shit, man! Like, this is for real." And the next day, I got that phone call. So. It was, awesome. it was pretty cool, man. You know, that's, that was a really good feeling. Like, you know, uh, first thing I did, I ran to my mom, man, for <laughs> crying and happy. We were, yeah. we were real happy. And then, um, <laughs> shit, man, I was right back in the gym that day. I'm like, man, I got to get right back in the gym. You know, yeah. like, it all hit me, and I enjoyed the moment and lived in the moment. But, I mean, dude, right, right, back, right back to work, man. I was like, I got to get back to work. I, I just knew my lease was so short, you know, coming in at 24 years old with yeah. no college numbers and coming off an injury, like, you you got to be realistic with yourself yeah. as a player and 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 again like how the game and how the business works and you know I was 24 I'm coming in and I haven't been in baseball for a long time I do my leash is like this big man yeah no doubt like and that's just that's just how it goes you know yeah. like and you know you don't want to stress on that or think about that but you got to keep that you got to keep that in your mind at all times because once you forget about that and you start getting away from that man like, that's yeah. when things happen so uh, went to the Marlins um, you know did did what I did what I could do over there did. Did my best, I thought, on, on the field and off the field over there. Uh, played low way with them in, uh, in Jupiter, which was right at the spring training complex, which was kind of sweet. It was pretty cool. And then, um, man, I actually got uh, got released from there. That's crazy. Yeah, I, was about, I played about a month a month and a half, spring training, like a month of season maybe. And, uh, you know, got got released from there. Uh, there was, it, was, it was nothing personal on my end. Yeah. And, you know, hey, thanks for the opportunity. In and out, quick conversation. Real, yeah. Still, again, real grateful for – for being where I am, you know, not not upset about, oh, why can I get none of, none of that stuff, yeah. you know, like it's just being professional. It made a decision, man. You got you got to take it on the chin and again thank them, be real grateful for the opportunity they gave me, and we're on to the next one, man. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, I think let's hold for the fans because I think we're gonna do an, another segment that to be continued. Yeah, yeah, of, that's, of it, the, gets, it gets of, crazy after of, this part, of man. I tell you that of the Nats. Yeah, yeah, it gets. But three three quick questions. Yep. How many tattoos you have? Oh man, I lost count. 
What? Yeah, man, I lost count. I can't even tell you that. We have a BP playlist that we're going to make. It's going to be the most fire BP playlist. Playlist. What would three songs that you put in there? Three songs? Yeah. Right, I'll, give, I'll give you three artists because I'm a big artist guy. All right. We're going to have Lil Baby in there. Okay. We're going to have... Uh, Man, this is, I'm going to throw this out there. We're going to have 50 Cent in there, man. I'm a big 50 Cent fan. Well, of course, bro. yeah. 50 Cent. Why not, get 50 Cent in there. Yeah, dude. I just listened to his book. He's the man. And then uh, Vitamin water. we can keep it cool, man. Throw some Mac Miller in there, some Rod Wave, you know, like yeah. the vibe out a little bit. All right, okay, cool. And then do you wear earrings on the man? Oh, no, never. No? No, no, never, man. That's That, that was just never me. It, I was. I mean, I played, dude, my, my high school Is it both coach. or just right or left? Yeah, I, I, got, uh, I, got, I, got, I sure. got both, man. Right. I was, when I was a kid, I used to just have one big one. I thought <laughs> I was the coolest kid ever. It said AJ on it. I walked around, I was like in the seventh grade, I thought I was the coolest kid. One day, some kid hit it playing dodgeball, knocked it out of my ear, I started crying. I'm like, <laughs> shit. <laughs> but, so throwing 60 poo. Yeah, dude. But, guys, thanks for tuning in. AJ, he's definitely going to come back. This is going to be a to be continued. There's so much more that I want to ask him, and we'll see you soon. Appreciate it, Don. That's fun, man. Yeah, that, that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Make sure you hit that subscribe button because you don't know who's going to be on next. Like, comment, share this video. Next time, we're going to walk it off.